Howdy. Obviously, I'm gonna talk about mountain water. And maybe also about white rivers. There is several around Mount St. Helens in the USA, which is a volcano, which has the world's fastest growing glacier within its caldera. We have white rivers in France, Russia, Italy, Germany, Malaysia, wherever you go. I have been talking about these extensively. The reason for taking this topic out once again is quake activity in Switzerland. Let's put it about this size. Let me just show you first that here are the quakes 14 hours ago, 1.67 kilometers in depth. And on 1.8, 23 hours ago, 8 kilometers in depth. So, let's put this about this size here. And I want to you to notice that we have the town called Brick here. Brick. So, this is a picture I created some time ago. Here we have once again Brick, and we have the Portal Lake here. There is a thermal bath and the plant geothermal energy plant. <laughs> a plant plant. That's just what we are looking at now. And it's probably very important to understand that there in the valley we have geothermal potential. And the Portelsee is a very interesting lake. Because if you take a closer look at it, it seems to have this circular pattern. And I think it is because it is fed from below. And on the edge of the lake, we have different colored sediments. Yeah, the picture quality isn't the best, but what to do? If we take a look from the other side of the valley, so to say, we can find brick down here and Bortlesee up here. There is quite some height difference between those, between the lake and the city. And here I, in a way, try to draw the drainage path of the lake. And here on the right, if you look at the lake itself and its surroundings, it has a caldera, crater-like shape. So now, back to the quakes. Now let's see how close they are approximately to the portal lake. Sometimes it's very hard to find the Portal Lake because it's just very hard to see. It's somewhere here, I guess. That's the Blue Lake. Which, after all, is probably quite like the portal lake. Yeah, now I found the portal horn, which is the mountain peak, and here's the lake. Yeah, probably you see the circumpolar pattern. Maybe you see it, maybe not. It's not up to me. But anyway, 
There is a water vein drawn there, which goes to the lake, and there are many, 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 many others. So now, as we have found this, let's try to measure quickly. Yeah, a little bit more than two kilometers. I won't now play around with that too much because it's probably very annoying to watch. <laughs> 2.4 kilometers from the center of the lake to approximately the center of one quake. So not too far, but it is still on the other side. Why I think this is important? Uh, there is a story to this lake and also the drainage river. I don't know if it's marked here anywhere. Maybe we have to switch to this. That's very, really hard to see anything here. Maybe we have to go down to the valley. Here it says, Saltina, Saltina, which is this river. It has a name, so it's probably there like always, you know, it's not just this kind of every now and then when it's raining, there is a little bit of water coming down. No, it's like, you know, the constant water source. It has a name and stuff. And back in the days, there has been some action in this region. 25 years ago, yeah, probably I have to translate this again, jump back to German. Severe weather, 1.5 tons of debris per second. 25 years ago, the Saltina flooded brick. Maybe it's not 25. When is this made? I don't know. Maybe it's 25. It was 93. This is how it looked afterwards. I have been there a few weeks after this event. And there was like <laughs> quite much work still to do. 25 years ago, the raging flood of the Saltina devastated the city center of Brick. Two women died in a shop trapped by the flood's mud and stones. There is no special occasion on the anniversary of the tragedy, as every year a commemorative mass will be celebrated on the station square, the community announced. In addition, the fire brigade will raise the Saltina Bridge, which was built four years after the devastating flood where the disaster began. Saltina. Saltina, that's now a short Wikipedia thing I found. There's somewhere else much more stuff about this river. But let's translate it. The Saltina, the name from Latin, saltare, to jump. Much more we don't have to read, actually actually because if you just think about that how this river got its name so it's obviously known since a very long time that this river every now and then floods and since the word jump somehow indicates that there is a rather quick movement we maybe have to Assume that the water rise could be very rapid. So after all, it shouldn't be very a surprise that there could be massive floods coming just from this river and it starts more or less, or at its start there is this portelsee. Which to me just looks like that there is this circumpolar pattern which might very well indicate that it is fed from below. 
Maybe not 100%, there is melting water and precipitation also, but mainly that's why there is a lake in the first place, because it is fed from below. It discharges by and through the river Saltina. And here is the Bortle Lake, and here are the quakes. And there has been some little snowfall there and stuff. If we just take a quick look at the last 12 hours of satellite imagery. Here we have a weather system, here's another one. And there is the conversion zone between. And that's one of those places where we experience rather often earthquakes in the conversion zone between two weather systems. The double layer. And here in between, somewhere here, Saltina Brick and the Bortle Lake. Here is Brick. And that's probably the Bortle Lake, is it? Yes. So, I think it is, is just very interesting to follow. I don't expect any floods, but what sort of, you know? They can be very surprising. It doesn't maybe need too much precipitation in order to get some <coughs> endogenous energy circuits ramped up in order for them to produce whatever discharge upwards. Might it be a quake? Might it be fog, which is hugging the mountains or whatsoever things? And also we have to remember that whatever precipitation we experience, is it rain or snow? or lightning. It is an electrical discharge event. But anyway, I leave it here. Thanks. Bye.